So this is a Bailey Discovery D44. It's going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van, you've got the jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake. We'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. On each corner of the van at the front, you've got your wind down legs. So you're actually through these shaped pieces here underneath the front light. You've got your wind down legs and the leg winder will be inside the caravan for these. So you have them on either side at the front, as you can see. But on the uh, off side of the caravan, then you've got your water pump connection. So it's very simple to use. You'll pull back the blue trigger and pull the pump out from the side of the van or push the pump in with the blue trigger held back and then that blue piece at the bottom here will lock in place and the pump itself will drop down inside the aqua roll. You've then got your Truma heating and hot water flue. Um, you need to leave this uncovered at all times. You'd never cover it up as uh, that does get hot and potentially it could melt anything that is up against it. You've then got your fridge vents. The two fridge vents are there are simply to allow hot air out the back of the fridge unit and to take some cool air in. And behind the top one, you've also got a gas flue on the right hand side there for when you're running the fridge on gas. The wheel nuts will talk before you leave site so, they, so you can see they've been tightened correctly and we'll demonstrate the motor move to you also so you can see that is working as it should. Fresh water that goes in the front of the caravan has to come out somewhere. So that's what these two grey pipe bits of pipe here are for. I have two bits of grey pipe that drop down inside your waste master. Inside the van then you have your toilet flush tanks, you'll open this up and it will take three and a half litres of water and a cap full of the pink fluid prior to use. Then the bottom here, you've got your toilet waste set, you lift up the handle at the bottom and pull it towards you to release it. The neck here turns out so you can tip the waste away. The grey cap is a measure for your pink and your blue fluid. And on the back of the cassette, you've got your orange pressure relief button, so when you're tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. On the rear of the van on either side, again, you've got your wind down legs. And like I said, they are only there for stabilizing the van, so you've literally just touched them on the floor. You'd never lift the caravan up as it could potentially damage the floor of the van. the back of the van, on the door side, you've got your underbed storage locker at the back. Motor mover power switch in the locker on the side here, or in the panel on the side here. Your, three, uh, your mains power lead coming into the side of the van for your power behind the door. You've got your gas locker, which will open up, just as you can see. And then in there on the side here, you've got your regulator for the gas system and you've got your gas bottle with gas valve on top. The pipe work that goes into the bottle is a reverse thread fitment. Um, so you need to turn that the opposite way to a standard uh, bottle top, for instance, to release the gas fitting. You've then got your storage for underneath your seating at the front of the van. Going inside the caravan. On the right hand side, as you walk in, you'll see the main control panel. So on here you've got your main power switch for the caravan, on and off, that's basically your isolator switch. You've then got your battery voltage on the left hand side here. On the right hand side you've got your internal roof light. And then you have your awning light on the switch here. I'll come back to the water pump switch in a second. First thing we're going to need to do when you arrive on site is to set up your water system. So you'll have your aqua roll connected on the outside with your aqua roll completely full. Then you're going to come over to each tap on board the caravan, open them all up on the hot side. You will actually notice I've already filled the water system at the moment. Um, that's just going to run through the last bit of water that's in the pipe work at this moment in time. Then you're going to come underneath the seat on the front right hand side. And underneath here, you will find a little yellow valve. Now, I've only got one hand available to lift the bed box, uh, but normally take the cushions off, etc. That yellow valve needs to be parallel with the floor. So that's right next to the water heater just down on the right hand side of the van, as you can see, just below that bit of grey pipe work. So when you want to fill the system, like I said, that valve needs to be parallel with the floor, that yellow tap. If you want to drain the water system down, you can do that by pointing the yellow valve towards the bottom of the seat. So lifting it upwards and pointing it upwards towards the seat will drain all of the water out of the caravan itself. You would do this for winter storage, regardless of whether you're going to use it again the next week, um, or every time you store the van essentially, whether it's during the winter or the summer, sorry. Uh, due to the fact that it could potentially freeze up the water system on board the van and crack the water tank down below the camera. 
Also, you can crack the taps open if that did freeze up over the winter, the water that's left in there, and all the pipe work associated to the water system. So once that valve is parallel with the floor, and you've got all of the taps, so that's the two taps on the sinks, and the shower tap also open on the hot side, as we have this one here, you can then turn on your water pump. Now to start with, obviously as you can see, I'd already filled the water system up because it was running some water out to start with. However, normally when you turn this pump on, it's gonna take about five or 10 minutes so to bleed the water system. Once you've got water running continuously out of every tap on board the caravan, you can then shut all of the taps off. At that point, you can actually start thinking about warming the water on board the caravan. So on this control panel just here, one that says Trum, right? is your heating and hot water control panel. You press the central button, just here, and the screen will light up. The first icon you see flashing here is your internal room temperature. You press the button again, and then you control the temperature by spinning the dial, like an old style thermostat, you spin it whichever way you want the temperature to go. And then you can select the temperature, say for instance 25 degrees, by pressing the central button. That is then the water temperature, uh, the heating for the internal, uh, the inside of the caravan set. I'm just going to turn that back off as we don't need it on today. The next icon you see to the right here, so when you've got the motorhome flashing, you can spin the dial to the right, to the water symbol. And then you can select eco, hot or boost for your water system. So eco's just a uh, temperature essentially to keep it warm, um, so the next time you come to shower or want to warm the water up it hasn't got to warm up completely from cold hot is as it says on the tin um, again to set any of these you just press the central button and then you've got a timed boost when you're showering that's normally a 30 minute time boost to select it you'll press the central button and when you've selected it it will come up at the top here saying boost eco or hot depending on what you have selected on the caravan you can also select off for if you don't want the hot water hot water to be on Spin the dial to the right, to the gas canister and the electric volts here. Now this is where you'll select the power source you want to use, depending on what site you're on. Now if you're off grid, you, you're going to use the gas on its own for the heating and hot water, so you're going to select gas just here. If you're on a site where gas, uh, where electric's quite low, you can use a mix of gas and electric at the same time. And that's one kilowatt of power coming into the caravan. You can also do the same with two kilowatts of power coming into the caravan to boost the system if you ever need to on a particularly cold day. You've then got electric one on its own, so that's one kilowatt of power on its own, and then you've got two kilowatts of power on its own also. Now here on site we can only run one kilowatt of power. Um, we haven't got the gas bottles turned on at the moment, uh, just due to the fact we don't want to run out the gas bottle before you get the caravan. If it ever failed to ignite, it would actually come up with a warning triangle down here at the bottom and gas fail on the screen. So like I said, it will just depend on what site you're on. If you're off-grid, you'll use the gas. If you've got low power available to boost the system, you can use mix of gas and electric at the same time, which is what the one simplifies here, the electric and the mix the gas. Mix two, the same thing, 2, 000, uh, two kilowatts of power and gas at the same time. Electric one, one kilowatt of power on its own coming into the caravan, and electric two, two kilowatts of power coming into the caravan. The only way you'll know what you can set that to is by, uh, by asking the site office when you arrive on your holiday. This caravan, you can actually use blown air heating on it as well. So around the van, you'll notice you've got them little black vents around the van, a bit like you've got in your car. And essentially it works in a very similar way. You spin the dial around to the fan symbol here on the right hand side, hit the button, and then you can select vent, press the button again, and then you can select the fan speed if you want to use blown air heating. Or you can actually use that as a cold air fan to blow some cool air around the van during the summer. Down the bottom of this screen, you've actually got three other options. For these, we do advise you read the manuals that come with the caravan. The reason being, if I try to explain those in the, in the video here, it take me two to three hours to do. What you've essentially got down there is, though, is a timer for your heating and hot water like you've got at home. Um, and then you've got some other op advanced options in the bottom there as well and also so you can set your clock for the control panel because as you can see it doesn't stay set when you turn the power off. That's your heating and hot water and how to fill the water system. The next thing we're going to go to is the fridge. 
Now the fridge is very simple to use. You've either got off at the top here. If you've got mains power on the site you're going to, like a mains hookup, you can have it on electric here and you can control the temperature of the fridge on this dial on the right hand side. The thicker the bar is at this end, for instance, is the colder the fridge will be. When you're towing down the road and you're connected to the car you're towing with, you can actually select the battery mode. Now what that battery mode does is it allows the fridge to work off the 12 volt supply coming from the car. It will not work from the 12 volt supply on board the caravan and it is for only for when you're towing. So like I said, connect to the car, have, you can have your main control panel turned off just here on this button here. That can be turned off when you're towing. Come inside and select your 12 volt mode. Like I said at that point the fridge will work as a cool box to get the beer, wine or the tonic water for the GNT nice and cold as you're travelling to your holiday. At the bottom here you've got the option to run gas so again if you're off grid for instance you can run the fridge as, as a gas operated fridge. To ignite the fridge on gas you're pressing the temperature control and hit the igniter at the same time. Once it has ignited you'll keep hold of the button here keep hold of that and what you'll notice is this little red line here will come around to the green which is essentially your pilot light so the red light is your pilot light and when it's in the green it actually means the fridge is ignited then when that red line is around there you need to hold the valve in for a further five to ten seconds then slowly release the valve and you, again on gas you can control the temperature of the fridge on the dial in the center here Into the bathroom now we go, which is the last piece of equipment on the caravan we're going to go through. You have an electric flush on the toilet, just here, which allows you to flush your toilet system. Like I said, you need to fill that from the outside. You have a red indicator light just here that appears when the toilet waste cassette is completely full. And then down below the toilet, you have a grey waste handle, which you can open up to allow the waste into the cassette under the caravan, or in the side of the caravan, should I say. When you are removing the cassette from the, from the side of the van, you need to make sure this flap is in the position it's in now. If it isn't, it will not allow you to remove the toilet cassette from under the van. And that is also the same as if you've got the toilet seat turned as well. So you can turn the toilet seat for convenience. However, when you are removing that cassette from underneath the caravan, you need to make sure it's in the straight on position with the toilet. So the original position it was in in the video. And that will allow you to remove that cassette. If that is turned at all, it will lock the cassette in place. And if you pull that cassette out, it will actually damage the toilet system itself. So that is the Bailey Discovery D44. If you have any further questions on the caravan, please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the Caravan Company. And we'll be more than happy to help. We appreciate the business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon when you collect your caravan. Thank you for now. Bye bye.